and like yeah. what is bluegrass? Well, bluegrass is a, in Norway it's a very misused term because bluegrass is basically uh the legacy music from Bill Monroe. And then we're back on, you know, the heritage of the genre, but uh Bill Monroe was like the father of bluegrass and um he had a duo with his brother called Charlie Monroe and they were kind of speeding up old instrumentals and old like Irish tunes and old uh uh you know country tunes and they were just playing them very fast and then when they split up Bill Monroe started a new band and he called it Bill Monroe and his bluegrass boys mm. and the bluegrass genre is kind of based around his ideals and the unique thing about his instrument and his instrumentation is that he had this f style mandolin you know with a swirl mm. on the body and uh, and that it, that mandolin sounded kind of different from other mandolins and uh, uh it kind of sounds it has a brighter like more snary sound and so he built everything up on like him being the snare and then the bass being like a bass drum and uh, the banjo being like a hi hat basically yeah. so making everything just groove internally in the instrumentation and, and kind of, uh, kind of Monroe, st- st- I guess, standardized standardized the whole uh um, yeah. the whole the sound in a way <clears throat> Yeah, it it became like a a perfect match of different sounds and you know like mixing bluegrass music if you're going to do it very traditionally mm-hmm. it's kind of it makes sense because you have the bass on the bottom and then you have the guitar and it kind of interlaps and then above that you have the banjo and then above that you have the mandolin and then you have the fiddle so yeah. the frequencies are kind of like perfectly interweaving and mm. it makes it like this plastic groove uh, acoustic groove machine mm. and that's basically like what i believe bill monroe what was the genius about that was that he he kind of just made something really work and it it worked at an acoustic level as well uh as long as the pitch or the tunings were high okay. so that's why almost every bill monroe song it's up in b or b flat Okay. Uh, which is a nightmare for the fiddle players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so lots of like the bluegrass fiddle playing, it's you know, it's all in position. There's no loose strings. Um so uh, that's a struggle for like uh, folk violin players to like jump into a bluegrass song. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but but yeah. would they, would they also incorporate like improvised solos and stuff at that point? Because that's where yeah. I feel like bluegrass kind of <clears throat> starts to border uh, more towards the world of jazz and blues yeah. with those like improvised solos with clear uh like blues tonality mixed in with the whole like, celtic yeah yeah that's... so yeah but but that's uh i think that's a good observation you know because uh, lots of people they have kind of uh compared bluegrass to country as bebop to swing jazz you know mm-hmm. it's just speeding up everything and everything's just becoming more virtuosic but uh one thing about bluegrass that i think is different at least on the older tunes is that the element of improvisation wasn't that uh you know uh not everyone in the group would improvise there would never be a guitar solo uh the mandolin solo would usually be like the melody that he played in his certain way to bring out everything on the instrument the banjo player would usually have his break and that was you call it like a banjo solo is like a break uh and uh, the fiddle player would you know often maybe be the one improvising and the reason for that is that they recruited fiddle players from the jazz scene uh so lots of you know jazz fiddle players that weren't able to get jobs they were like lying and saying that yeah I'm a bluegrass fiddler <laughs> like uh, Kenny Baker is one of the most uh, famous ones and there's like this famous story about him you know lying his way into the bluegrass boys uh, <laughs> so the fiddle players they would they would usually have some like improvisational chops from from their schooling in jazz mm. uh, so it's not until later you know that the the banjo players started to like become really free uh Yeah, I th- I guess like Bela Fleck and that you know around the mid 70s mm-hmm. something started to happen with Bela Fleck and a couple of other players Alan Mundy, Tony Trishka, stuff like that. They started like, to like 
break out of the the sort of strict um what do you say yeah. um foundation of the bluegrass formula like yeah. well, at, at at what point do, does it stop being bluegrass i suppose it's like again yeah that's like a <laughs> philosophical question yeah it's like it's, uh, the question about what's jazz and what's not jazz yeah i mean if you but add a drummer like, is it is it still bluegrass <clears throat> no <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no uh, uh but it's like uh lots of people they just have um um they have this uh, uh urge to to you know define bluegrass as you know within the confoundries of uh, bill monroe's uh style and if you do something else it's like it is bluegrass but it's kind of second stream bluegrass third stream bluegrass and that's what they call it <laughs> Uh, and then you have the term new grass. Uh, so, yeah, so it's a uh, new grass is kind of defined that it's improvisational and maybe that they're jamming uh, lots more than playing tunes. Uh, yeah. And then you have that's just a whole nother direction of. Um, and I mean, like the, the, the scene that you were talking about earlier in the early 2000s with uh, Alison Krauss and Union Station, I mean, they would play mostly uh like newly written pop songs on their albums wouldn't they like with still with the yeah. very polished <clears throat> blue bluegrass sound yeah so they would write uh i think uh, in my opinion at least they would write new tunes or they would write arrangements to older tunes with kind of like smart sounds and they would do like m- some pop tricks to you know to you know, reach a wider audience uh, but the players in the bands uh, there they would be like uh, nashville like uh, studio musicians and uh, some of them from like the old bluegrass scene hmm. alison kraus herself she was uh, widely known as a fiddle player uh, before she was uh, discovered more as a, like a brilliant uh, lead yeah. singer hmm. so yeah so, but that was like major influence on us in Norway, and and you know it was just a wave of different bands that started playing bluegrass at the same time, mm. and uh, so.